Well, Paul, Isaac, congratulations. You are both moving forward into round three of our competition. Now, you guys are heading back to your home forges to work on yet another iconic weapon from the Civil War era. And that weapon is... Ulysses Grant's Donaldson Sword. Donaldson's sword is a commemorative blade awarded to General Ulysses S. Grant for his victory at Fort Donaldson in February of 1862, one of the first major Union victories of the Civil War. The weapon features a highly ornate handle and an engraved blade based on the popular 1860s officer sword. After General Grant's death, his wife donated the sword to the Smithsonian Institute in 1886, and it remains under their care to this day. You have four days to work on your swords, Good luck, see you then. I'm Isaac Gardner and I'm 24 years old. I'm a full-time jeweler. As a jeweler, there's a lot of small detail work and making sure that I have something that's one, comfortable, two, strong, and three, looks amazing. So as a bladesmith, I focus on the same three aspects. It's time to quench it. <sighs> Hopefully it came out hard. That's hard, that's hard. Oh, I feel so much better. I need the rear-facing quillion, and the two clamshell guards, and the knuckle bow. It's gonna be something like that. So now that I have the components complete, I can move on to welding them together. I'm really happy with how it's looking. That's so cool. It's really ornate and complex. I cut in the channels for my turquoise and amber inlay. There we go. Cool beans. I've worked really hard up to this point, and now I'm so happy with my General Grant's Donaldson sword. I'm Paul Sutt. I'm from New Jersey, and I'm a personal trainer. So I've been a lifelong martial artist and a weapons expert, and when I had the opportunity to learn how to forge, I jumped on it as fast as I could. It's just my passion. So we're getting close to uh, quench time. It's a little tricky for me because I've never done a blade this thin before. I'm nervous as hell. Two whole days hammering this sword out. If something goes wrong with the quench, there is no time to do that again. Here we go. Don't feel any tings or pings or anything. I pull it out and I'm so happy. It looks straight, it looks perfect. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the clamshell, try to make it look as pretty as I can, as quick as I can, and then it's gonna be shaping the handle into a comfortable handle, almost. So I finally got all the pieces to fit on the tang. All right, this entire experience has been more fun than I ever imagined it would be. The blade is a little bit chunky, but it will kill. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. The sword was made to be a dueling type of weapon. So we'm gonna try to deliver the same light slashes and thrusts on this ballistics dummy. Paul, you ready for this? Oh, yes, sir. All right, let's do this. All right, Paul, let's talk about your version of General Grant's Donaldson sword. The weight on this blade is not that of a dueling sword because it requires a little bit more than just wrist movement. But it is a great cutting sword. Your edges are sharp. Even with the harassing cut you can see there, cut deeply. And more importantly, sir, it will keel. Isaac, your turn, sir. You ready for this? I guess. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Isaac, let's talk about your weapon here. What I like about it is the time you took to put these details that we were asking for on your sword. Every cut was deep, and not a lot of power is required when you're swinging something so light. 
but in probably hitting the bone, your blade did take a slight bend. But overall, sir, your weapon, you'll kill. Thank you. Paul, Isaac, you know what time it is. Time for the strength test, a fan favorite at the cringeworthy flex test. And we're going to flex those blades to 35 degrees in either direction. If you're still holding true, we're going to go to 45 degrees in either direction. Paul, you ready for this? Not really, but go ahead and bend away. So, Paul, as far as the construction of your blade goes, the handle's comfortable. We saw how well this sword cuts. You did a good job, but uh, if you look into that blade, you can actually see a dark spot on both sides of those blades. And whether that's a flaw that you picked up in the forging process or a flaw in the steel, I have no way of really telling right now. The grain structure on this looks fine, but having it shatter, having it pop like that, that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul, we absolutely hate to see that. You put a lot of work into your blade. You made it past the 35 on both sides, but you did break on the way to 45, but you're not out of the fight yet. Isaac, you've got to survive both of the 35 degree turns, as well as the official ruling of 40 degrees toward the south. <sighs> my heart is in my throat. This is literally make or break. I want to say thank you for your hard work. You have what it takes to fight in this forge. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thank you, gentlemen. This was such a good experience, and it was an honor to compete against such a good competitor. Isaac, we asked you to build General Grant's Donaldson sword. You performed phenomenally and built us something that is not only functional, but absolutely beautiful and stunning to look at. You are the Forge of Fire champion, and you just earned yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. I'm the Forge and Fire champion, baby! Woo! How do you feel? Cloud nine. Feeling so good. That's a remarkable piece of work, and you should be incredibly proud of them. Thank you. There's just too many feelings going through my head and my heart to really process what's all happening right now. I can't believe it. I'm feeling so good. <laughs>